Okay. So go with me to the book of Luke chapter 21, Luke chapter 21. And I'm going to talk about three strongholds that could get you left behind. Three strongholds that could get you left behind. So I'm not going to, uh, now Saturday night, if you watch this live via when we, we ministered this in court in Indiana, I broke this down a lot in detail in Luke 21, but we're not going to do that today for sake of time, uh, being here that we're broadcasting live on Facebook. Um, so when the disciples, let me give you a little bit of backdrop. Most of you guys who study eschatology or end times, you're going to know this already. So that's why I don't feel the necessity of, uh, exhausting you with all the, um, the, the the details of Luke 21 and this again you can find this in Matthew 24 and also in Mark 13 but when the disciples came to Jesus and asked him what would be the signs of your coming and the end of the age the Lord began to uh begin to expound on what those signs would be he talks about great earthquakes he talks about famines he talks about pestilence he talks about wars rumors of wars he talks about nations against nations kingdom against kingdom he said false prophets would arise and deceive and be deceived the the love of many would wax cold he talks about there be great and fearful signs from heaven um, and that men's hearts would fail them for fear of the expectation of things that are coming upon the earth. He talks about persecution would arise from your own home and from your own household, from your own loved ones. And you will be hated by all men for my name's sake. So he goes through all this. But then it's interesting. He gets down here. Listen to this. He gets to verse 34. Let me go to 33. Heaven and earth will pass away. But my words will by no means pass away and take, here it is, verse 34. This is where we're going to home in today on these three strongholds. Luke 21, 34, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be weighed down. Now, this word weighed down in some translations talks about your heart being weighed down or overcharged or pressed down, overloaded with, now here it is, if you're taking notes, here's the three strongholds. I believe these three strongholds are prevalent in our generation. Listen to what he says. Surfeiting, drunkenness, and the cares of this life. Let me say that again. Beware, lest at any time your hearts, now I want to stop there. Well, let's go back to the context of the scripture. Who is Jesus talking to here? He's not talking to them. He's not talking about to the world. He's not talking to the unregenerated. He's not talking to unbelievers. He's talking to us. That He's talking to disciples, followers of Christ, believers. He says, take heed to yourselves. That's us. Lest at any time your hearts, that's our hearts, be weighed down, and it, here it is, with surfeiting, drunkenness, and the cares of this life. Now, we're going to break down these three things, but why is this important, and why did he emphasize us taking heed to, our, to ourselves that our hearts not be weighed down with these things? Watch this. Here's why. So that, so that day come upon you unaware. What day? The coming of the Lord. This whole chapter of Luke 21 is dealing with all the way up here from verse 7 all the way down here to verse 34 is dealing with the coming of the Lord, the signs of the coming, being ready. Even up here uh, in verse 27 of Luke 21, he says, he talks about all these signs and he says, and then they will see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. So now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. So when he says, uh, take heed to yourselves that these three things don't weigh you down, that that day come upon you unaware. What day is he talking about? He's talking about the coming of the Lord. All right, now watch verse 35 for it. What is it? The coming of the Lord for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Now, again, I, 
when I was in uh, in, the, uh, in Corden this weekend in Corden, Indiana, I, br- I talked about the differ- the differential of this thing, the difference here. The difference is it's going to come upon it's going to come as a snare upon the face of the earth. It's going to come as a snare to those who are unregenerated, those who are blind by the God of this world, those whose hearts have not been uh, re- transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says that those who are unregenerated, those who are unbelievers, the heathen, they're walking in darkness and they're groping in the new, in the darkness and they, they know not where they go and they stumble and they fall. But the path of the just, come on somebody, is like a bright light. It's like a shining lamp that brights and gets brighter evermore unto the perfect day his word is a lamp unto our feet and it's a light into our path we are not as those in the darkness but we are children of the light so he says this day is going to come as a snare upon all those on the face of the earth now watch he shifts gears watch therefore now he shifts back to us watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things. Now stop. What are all these things? Now that's now if we if we if we didn't do a deeper understanding of this or deeper uh uh word study on this and break this down line on line, precept on precept and here a little or there a little, then we could say well, this is impossible because we can't escape earthquakes. There's always been earthquakes since the beginning of times. We can't escape famines. We can't escape pestilence. We can't escape wars. We can't escape de- de- escape deception. That's true. But when when he says this, he says this generation that sees all these things will by no means pass away until all things be fulfilled. What he's saying here, guys, is. Here's the truth. This is what you always get with all the skeptics on this. All the skeptics want to come and say, we've always had earthquakes. We've always had disasters. We've always had famines. We've always had pestilences. We've always had wars and rumors of wars. I've heard this for 30 years. I've heard this for 50 years. I've heard this for 60 years. This is nothing new. And because, and, and as a result of that, you'll either become a skeptic, you'll become an unbeliever, or you'll you'll get to a point where you become a scoffer and the, and the book of first Peter talks about the scoffers will come in the last days and where is the promise of his coming for things have gone on since they've begun since the beginning of time in other words nothing's changed we've always heard this I'm tired of hearing this I'm tired of hearing it preached uh, it's irrelevant we don't need to hear it, be it, hear it preached anymore but what this is is a failure to rightfully divide the word and understand the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ and the words that he spoke in Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13. First of all, he says, these things will come as birth pangs or sorrows. Okay? They're not going to, just because we've had these things in the past doesn't mean anything. But it's as we get closer and closer to the coming of the Lord, the appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ, they are going to accelerate in intensity and they're going to increase in number. Let me say that again. They're going to become stronger and they're going to become more frequent. Again, that's why it alludes to birth pangs. Uh, The Greek word is sorrows. It's sorrows in a woman, the sorrows of her birth pangs or her labor pains. So that's one clue. Number two is he says this generation that sees all these things. It's not a generation that sees uh, a lot of earthquakes and then another generation sees a lot of war and then another generation sees a lot of famine. No, he says there will be a generation that will be alive and well at the time frame of this during the season of this that will see an increase of all these things happening simultaneously. I mean, it's like you, it would be like you getting up on Monday morning and we've just had a, uh, a mega quake in, in somewhere in the world and it caused a tsunami. And then in the same day, you, ho- you heard about a war getting ready to break out in somewhere in the Middle East. And then the next day you wake up, you hear about church attacks that are hitting here and hitting over there and hitting over here. And then you hear about a man standing up and saying that he's the Christ, he's the Messiah like Jim Jones or uh, uh, 
or David Koresh or any of these ones that's come in the past and has deceived people and caused many deaths. I mean, we're talking like like in a week span, you're seeing one thing after another thing after another thing, and it's becoming more intensified and it's becoming more frequent. That's what we're dealing with. He says the generation, it's alive. And then number three, he says, don't watch this. When you go up here, he talks about the fig tree and it's budding. And you know that the summer is near. The fig tree here is alluding to the nation of Israel. So Israel is the timepiece. It's the centerpiece of all prophecy. It is the grain. It is the main hourglass in which the grains of sand are falling. So if you want to know what, where we are prophetically on God's calendar, watch Israel. This is why 1948, 1967, and these things were major, major climaxes in Bible prophecy because they dealt directly with the fig tree and with the nation of Israel. Okay, so, but let me go back to this. Now, so Jesus says, look, these things are going to come. They're going to be more intensified. They're going to increase in number. They're going to happen. He says, but what you need to understand, he's talking to us, is you're going to have to guard your heart. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it comes the issues of life. He says, you're going to have to be careful that your hearts are not weighed down with surfeiting, drunkenness, and the cares of life that you become so weighed down by these things that you miss the gathering together. The harpezo, the catching away, the blast of the trumpet, the sound of the voice of an archangel sh shouting. Come on, the sound of come up hither. First Thess or, uh, yes, First Thessalonians. Uh, now, let, let me break this down. And again, he says, watch and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass. Now I heard somebody say, well, I tell you what, that rapture doctrine is a doctrine of escapism. Well, it's interesting because G Jesus himself, words of red, told us to pray always that we may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Now you pray and tell me why the Son of Man told us to pray that we may be found worthy to escape all these things if there was not an escape option. Golly, I could just throw down the microphone right there and say I'm done and walk away and shut down the broadcast right there. 